I had shared with you some frustrations that I had with Joe Rogan outing Colby Covington's approach to marketing. Brendan Schaub responded to what I said about Joe Rogan. And just to recap for you, what I had said about Joe was that he is an insider who is revealing secrets of the business to outsiders, which is the audience, to which Brennan responded the following. Chael was so upset. It's like Rogan got on the went, you know what? And uh, as he's, who's, who's on there with him? Anik. He's like, you know what, I actually talked to Kobe before the fight, and he told me what he plans to do is go in there double leg right away. And if the double leg doesn't go well, he's looking for a head snatch. After the head snatch, mm. he says the guillotine's there. And every time RDA steps to his left, he's going to throw a right high kick. He didn't give away his goddamn game yeah. plan. So it's like... Chael's so upset that Rogan's pulled the wool over everyone's eyes and, oh, here he is. You know, he's been doing this magic trick. No, I, I think, Chael, the audience is not that naive. No. It, we all know this. And he's almost, you know, what Kobe's doing is he's going the Floyd Mayweather route where we're tuning in to see him lose. Mm-hmm. So I, it's a little dramatic. I get it. I, I agree. Rogan doesn't need to do that. I also don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't think that affected pay-per-view at all. All right, so my response to the response. Let's take this thing apart. I mean, first off, I wasn't looking for a back and forth on this. I didn't think this was going to turn into something, and I still don't uh, believe that it necessarily is. is, I don't think anybody's going to war here, but should we? I will be standing my ground. Now, let's break down a few things that Brendan said there right out of the gate. Okay, he closes by saying, I don't think that affected pay-per-view at all. Well, uh, Brendan, excuse me. I won't pick on you for that one. I'm going to assume that you misspoke. He said it during the pay-per-view. So, yes, I think we can fully concede to the fact it did not affect pay-per-view buys. To speak to the beginning of your premise, you were coming at it from a standpoint that I said that Joe was revealing some kind of infinder, insider information. You were speaking about the fight itself, and you used the example that it was his game plan. If he steps left, right, and then he steps left, and then there's this guillotine there. We're coming at this from two different approaches. I'm speaking to you about the business, and you're responding about the sport. So right off the cusp, I don't feel that you're understanding what my message is. So I'm going to attempt to say it yet again. I am not talking about the sport, and so many people want to defer back to the fact that this is a sport. First and foremost, this is a business that prevents, presents to the audience a sport. First and foremost. I think that everybody understands that, but I'm going to lay that out anyway. I will concede to the point that, yes, I don't need to be as pissed off as I was. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. It has happened time and time again. And for me to be irritated that somebody from inside the metal apron is outing another guy from inside the metal apron is a point that I stand by. It is an industry secret. Sure it is. And, Brennan, I got to tell you, too, the message that you said— of I don't think the Joe's, you know, you said pulling the wool over everybody's eyes. I think you mean revealing the wool, removing the wool from everybody's eyes, because we all know what Colby is doing. That's where that's where that you and I've got a disagreement here. That's where you are flat wrong. And so many people in businesses, not just this one, when they live in the business, as Brendan does, as I do, as Joe does. You get so close to the trees, you can't see the forest. To make a statement that we all know what Colby is out there doing, that's because you're an insider and you don't step back to 10,000 square feet and look at this objectively. People make this mistake all the time, but it was the mistake in your rebuttal to my comment. Scott Coker and Dana White, well, ha- the leaders of this business, will happily admit to you anytime that the hardcore fans who you speak to, Brendan, and who I speak to, who you and I make our living off of, the hardcore fans who you identified as everybody, everybody knows, represents 15% of this marketplace. There is another 85% out there that tune in, that come to the shows, that drive the actual business. They are far more important than the 15% business-wise. 
That doesn't mean we don't serve the 15%. Of course we do. We love our base. We want that 15 to become 18, to become 21, to become 30. Sure we do. But when you look at this thing objectively, no, they don't. You are wrong, Brendan. You and I understand it because we spend our lives in the gym and in front of these microphones and in front of these guys because we never miss a car because we know when somebody is seeking attention. We know when somebody has true skills. We know when those two worlds come together. We know what we're looking at. But 85% do not. And it is wrong that somebody from within inside that metal off apron discusses what another guy within that metal off apron is doing to the audience. It is none of their goddamn business, and you're wrong about that. You're talking about a business from a promotional standpoint that is based on evoking emotions. Stone Cold and The Rock were masters of evoking emotions, but when they sat down in that room and closed the door and figured out how they were going to do that when their music hit those speakers and they walked into the paying audience, there is a reason nobody put a camera on that meeting and revealed it to the audience because it's none of their business. And any business, in any single promotional business, if somebody is doing a marketing campaign or building a commercial, Nobody within that business gets to then go reveal to the audience, well, yeah, you know, we were doing that because we were trying to get your money and, you know, we kind of wanted you to go in this direction and here's what we wanted you to feel and we wanted you to think. It doesn't happen. They would be removed immediately. And that is my point. And, yeah, I didn't need to be as as upset I was about that. I, I will concede that to you. But it was a straw that broke the camel's back. How about you just tell the truth? Because that's where Joe's coming from anyway. He's going, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I came along in the 90s back when it was about the punches and kicks. And, yeah, you know, we fast forwarded and we're in the entertainment era. But I, I, I don't, nobody's going to control me. If I see something, I, I'm not going to fall for it. And I'm not going to look like I fell for it. Okay, great. That's not a helpful attitude, but that is your attitude. Okay, great. Then how about you just tell the truth? Colby Covington has to stay in a private hotel. He is the only athlete that stays in that hotel. He has to be separated. As a matter of fact, the last time he stayed in a fellow fighter hotel, he ended up in a street dust-up with heavyweight from reach over doom that ended up in some kind of a court case, possibly an arrest. I'd have to go back and look. How about you just tell the truth about that? How about you tell the truth about the fact that Colby Covington is the only guy on the UFC roster that has to have his own private security with him at all times because so many people hate him and have publicly threatened his harm. Why don't you just tell that? That's true. That's all true. The other side of that is he doesn't have to stay at another hotel and he doesn't need any private security and nobody's walking up to the world champion trying to start something in the streets. He doesn't need any of that. But a promoter realized there's a fantastic story there and it's worth me shelling out the money and it's worth my travel department booking him in a separate hotel and we'll send his own van to go pick him up for his media appearances. While the promoter wants to look as though they did that for a guy's safety, the promoter actually did that because he knows there's a monetizable storyline there. And because the promoter is in the world of presenting something to you that is competitive and real, as opposed to, say, the WWE, which is scripted, the promoter cannot come to you and tell you to go out and see this. So instead, he's going to do it, hope that you have the intelligence that God gave geese, and that you will just do it on your own, since he also, at the end of the night, hands you a paycheck. So if you're so married to the idea that you're not going to be part of the entertainment era and you came along in the 90s when there was only five shows a year and the uh, the laws of supply and demand were in your favor, even though you're confronted with the evidence that it's the entertainment area that has driven this industry and your specific business to a $4.2 billion valuation, even if you want to be so naive and unhelpful and ignorant and blind 
to those facts. If that's what you want to do and you're just going to tell the truth and you're only going to say what's on, you're not going to promote anything, then why don't you say the truth? Which is Colby Covington has to stay in his own hotel. Colby Covington was attacked on the streets of Australia by a UFC heavyweight. Colby Covington is surrounded by personal security. Why don't you tell those facts? They are real and they are compelling and they are far more compelling to your audience than, oh, he's just doing this to try to get attention and to get your pay-per-view money. Which is my only point. And the example that I also gave in that piece, and I stand by the example, it is the exact same thing as me going to Joe Rogan's act on a Saturday night in Beverly Hills, getting on an airplane and following him on a Tuesday night to Chicago where he's going to perform that same act and blurting out the punchline before it happens. It would ruin the show. And it doesn't endear me to the audience. And it doesn't make me a man of integrity to reveal that to the audience. The audience doesn't actually want in on that. That's the part of it that it takes a level of intelligence to understand. I'm I'm ending this segment. This piece is now over. So if there is going to be a rebuke to this or a rebuttal by Brendan or Joe or anybody else, those are the pieces that I'm giving you. Those are the pieces you need to speak. I'm now going to go in a different direction. So I don't want this to be part of a pending rebuke, should there be one. But is it extremely important for people to understand what in the hell they are doing? And it never ceases to amaze me how many people are in the business that don't know the business. The fighters are the least to know, and that's okay. And the ones that get it are going to skyrocket, and they're not going to share that information. They're going to hold that information, they're going to covet that, and then they're going to use it to promote themselves in front of everybody else. But I also deal with people in the office. I deal with people in the business that will never throw a punch or a kick that have absolutely nothing to do with what goes on inside of that cage, and it does stun me when they don't know what we're doing here. It does, it does stun me when they don't understand we're in the entertainment business. It does stun me when they do not understand we're, we are in the emotions business. I know a lot of fighters listen to this show. And they thank me. And I take a lot of pride in that. I say that humbly. But I will share with you guys another piece of information that appears to be lost by an insider in the business here. Which is not everybody knows. And don't take for granted they do. And do not use just your gym as your only focal group. And do not use your own social media as your only focal group. There's another 85%, a dominating lion share of people who aren't in the know. They do not know. Listening to John Jones interviews can be painfully embarrassing. It seems as though John can't do an interview where at some point in the interview he doesn't always say, oh, 100% of the time, go look one up. He'll go, well, you know, as I've said before. And then he'll make his statement. John, nobody, First off, John, no, we, we didn't know you said that before. As, as arrogant as you are to thinking people are following you around. Guys, I'm only using John for an example because it's a name you know. I'm not looking to kick John Jones. But it is a fine example. He can't do an interview. Can't do one interview without saying, well, you know, as I've said before. First off, no, we didn't know you said it before, you arrogant prick. As much as you think we're hanging on your every word, we're not. To go a step further, even if we heard the previous interview, for you to think we don't have enough going on in our real lives that we're going to sit and remember your interview, we're not. There's the reason that The Rock closes every show by saying, if you smell what The Rock is cooking, as opposed to him saying, and guys, as I said last week, if you smell what The Rock is cooking, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's a reason every politician gives the same message over and over, and you watch them on one channel, you turn to another channel, it's like they redid the interview with a different set and a different interviewer and put them in a different tie because it doesn't make a goddamn bit of difference. There's a reason McDonald's runs the exact same ad. They don't come out and say, well, you know, as I said before. They don't do that. They just run the same ad. They just put it out there over and over again. So lose the arrogance. 
do not act that because you're a fighter, you're somehow contributing to the world. To make a dollar in this world, you must do one of two things. You must provide a good or a service. A fighter is damn sure not providing a good, but they are providing a service. It's called entertainment. So don't get so locked into that. And don't make the mistake that Brendan made and say, we all know that. Who's we all? Us insiders that sit around and talk about it every day that go to our phones, go to the different websites and different social media, and we've got the time on our hands? We're not out slugging it out, doing a ditch or painting a house or doing some of these things that our consumers and our customers that we count on are doing so they can come and buy our product. We've got this time on our hands to ingest and digest and remember what's happening? The other 85% that drives the business doesn't. They either get invited to a party, hey, there's going to be some pizza and beer, and oh, by the way, a fight's going to be on. They're headed out to one of the commercial outlets. They're going to meet up with some buddies. Oh, and by the way, a fight's going on. They tuned into Sports Center after a football game, and boom, this guy popped on and had a compelling story, and he happens to be fighting tonight. On pay-per-view. I happen to get pay-per-view. I think I'm going to sit down and push the button. It's very casual. Very, very casual. And that is what drives the industry. So anytime anybody comes out and says, we all know what Colby Covington is doing. No, you don't. You know. But no, it's not a we all know. It's not. And it's never going to be. And while I hope that 15% does grow to 18 and 21, that 15% is never going to grow to the 85%. Every interview matters. Every word that comes out of your mouth matters. A fighter's time is very limited. Very limited. Go watch Sports Center right now. Tell me how much MMA you get. So when you get, go listen to Jim Rome right now. Go listen to Dan Levitard right now. And just tell me how much MMA you get. It's extremely limited. Don't waste your time by saying, well, as I've already said, who gives a goddamn if you already said it? What kind of arrogant prick is going to walk around and think that what, you can't repeat yourself? I don't care if you said it before or not. I'm asking you the question. Tell me what your answer is. Oh, I get asked that question all the time. Well, then it's probably a good question. So say your piece. I can tell you the first time I ever went on the Jim Rome show, I was sitting in the car with Jen Wink, who was the head of PR at the UFC at the time. It was just her and I in the van, and we were going over there. I didn't think much of it. Oh, that was a great opportunity. Cool, Jim Rome. I know who that is. 2009. I was new and young in the sport. She's got an entire pamphlet on the Jim Rome show, and she starts smarting me up before we go in. And that's when I realized, oh, wow, there's more to this than just sitting down to a microphone and going. And one of the things she shared with me, she said, you are the second UFC fighter. She said, Dana White's done his show, but only one other fighter has ever been invited on the Jim Rome show, and it was Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar got a total of two minutes and 36 seconds, so expect this to be very short because you are no Brock Lesnar. Okay, fair enough. It ended up being over a six-minute segment. I could tell you why. There was a whole story there. Some people that follow the sport will know, and a Lance Armstrong and the Mexican accent and this whole this whole big thing, but it ended up being this really long piece. And I, I was a big star amongst the UFC PR, and it didn't have anything to do with what I said or what Jim and I talked about. It was just a simple stopwatch factor. The one other fighter had ever been on there, his name was Brock Lesnar. He got two minutes and 36 seconds, and I got over six minutes. I was a big star. But it also taught me something. It taught me that in MMA, we are not entitled to these opportunities. And I do believe MMA is a mainstream sport. There's still that conversation. I don't think that there is much of one. When ESPN airs it, I think that ends the conversation. And I think that Fox gets a lot of credit, too. When Fox picks it up and airs I think that ends the conversation. It's now a mainstream sport. But I hear that dialogue. But even if we are a mainstream sport, we're still fighting. We do not have the same airtime as baseball or basketball or football or hockey. That's a reality. So do not go into an interview and scold the interviewer for asking you a question. And do not waste your airtime, those precious seconds that I had no idea that anybody kept track of. I had no idea until Jen Wink in that van pulled out a pamphlet and told me Brock Lesnar got two minutes and 36 seconds. That opened my eyes a lot. And I'm, so I'm sharing the story so it can open your guys' eyes. Don't waste one of those seconds by saying, well, as I've said before. That's not a message. That's not a market that doesn't target anybody. 
as I've said before. And it shows just a tremendous arrogance. Why would I possibly know what you've said before? And why would I care? I'm ABC. What, you said that on CBS? What do I care? Why would why I possibly care? It's a mistake fighters make. It's a very small one, but it ties into what Brendan's saying of we all know what Colby's doing. First off, no, you don't. You do not. And there's been very few guys who came into the sport. And I will tell you this. This is a very arrogant statement. I don't want to lose you guys. I don't want to make you, oh, wow, Chael, what an arrogant prick. I don't mean to. But if I was to retell history, I can't say it any accurately than to tell you the sport changed when I came along. 100%. All of the credit, whether it's good or bad, you guys decide. Maybe this is a black mark for me. But either way, the sport, I changed it. I'm the one that came along and rewrote the blueprint and showed people how important it is to speak. We call it mixed martial arts. Art is a form of expression, and then there is no greater form of expression than communication. It is quite literally what separates the humans from the animals. We can communicate. We can talk. So don't come out here and tell me that mixed martial arts while you're trying to get it accepted and you're trying to get it mainstream and you think everybody knows that communication isn't important. Sure it is. Yes, it is. And it does baffle me to the point of resentment. When somebody else would come in and question my opinion about the entertainment side of it, that is baffling to me. It starts with me and it stops with me. If you have access to me and my brain and my opinion and you have my phone number, I will hand you the right answer every single time. And when I speak out and I say that it's damaging for a commentator to out a guy for his gimmick, whatever that is, and you tell me it's not, that is baffling to me. It started with me, and it still to this day stops with me. And there is still not a greater brain in this space that isn't named Dana White or Scott Coker than me. Period. I have the numbers to support it. From the T-shirts to the live gate to the free TV to the pay-per-view to the biggest damn podcast this sport's ever seen without a close second to support that when it comes to an intellect of MMA, when it comes to character building, when it comes to evoking emotion, when it comes to driving yourself up the cart, it starts and stops with me. And, and that statement just made some of you sick to your stomach, and I know it did, and I apologize. That was a hell of an arrogant rant that I just gave you. I concede that it's arrogant. But I have gone for years where nobody has questioned that. It appears that now I'm being questioned, which baffles me. And if I was to be questioned, if there was to be a dialogue, then I need to be questioned by my own. I need to be questioned by the Rondas and the Brocks and the Connors. And frankly, I got to throw Kevin Lee into that mix as a new up-and-comer that actually understands and observes the business. I do not need to be questioned by anybody else that didn't take that same path, by anybody else that didn't embrace it, that didn't go for it, that didn't sit down with a plan, that didn't get off their biscuit and go out there and risk it. Because you wouldn't know. You would not know. And to the statement of, we all know, even if that was a miscategorized statement, which it was, but even if it was, no, you don't. You don't know. You never, you never know the outcome or if it doesn't work. In this space, you're either a worker or a mark. And if you're not smart enough to be a worker, then you are a mark. You do not know where Colby Covington is going to go with this. You have no idea. I promise you, you don't. I've known him since he was 11 years old. You do not know. You do not know what he's doing. You do not know what his master plan is. Because he's a worker. And like Socrates once said, 
The only reason I'm smarter than you all is because I know I'm not. When confronted with friction, Colby Covington will change directions. Mark my words. He knows what he's doing. Because he's smart enough to know that he doesn't. He is not locked in. So you cannot possibly say that we all know what he's doing. You're wrong. And this sport has only had a handful of workers, and that number's growing. At one point, there was one, and you're listening to him right now. And then it moved to two and three and four, and now it stopped at five. But that will grow, and that will change. And unless you are amongst those people who can come to me with any kind of verifiable number that your plan and your idea and your evoking of emotion worked, you do not have a seat at this table. You have to sit back and observe and do your best to break down what it is we're doing. But as soon as you think that you have all the answers, we will change the questions. That's what a worker does. You will never catch up. So sit back and enjoy the ride, and we will give you some kind of content, and we will continue to give you things that secondhand you can then break down and observe. But that's as close to this as you're going to get. And when I speak out on it and I get challenged with the numbers that back me, with the history that backs me, with the only meaningful fighter fighting today that can date himself back to 1997 when I first stepped in there, it confuses me and it shows me that no matter how much I like you and I want to believe that you're standing here alongside me as a worker, I am forced to face the reality that you are nothing more than a mark.